to delete data, we use the command delete from and specify the table that we're working in. For example, delete from moviegoers. If we run this, it will delete all the records in the table. To delete just the records matching a particular string, we specify the criteria to match using the WHERE command, just as we did to select data. WHERE LAST NAME equals GATES. This will delete just the record with the surname GATES. To delete records where more than one field is involved in the selection, we use the same syntax as in PHP using a double ampersand for the AND clause. Delete from favourites, where user ID equals 3, double ampersand, movie ID equals 9. This is the syntax that we'll use later to delete a particular movie from a given moviegoers list of favourites. Just for completeness, we'll do the commands to empty a table of all its data whilst retaining just the structure, the field names and their data types. This is truncate, truncate table favourites. Now when you click on Browse, you will be taken to the Structure view of the table, because there are no records in it. Finally, to delete a table or a whole database, we use Drop. Drop Table Moviegoers, and that table will no longer be there. The default settings of phpMyAdmin prevent us from using Drop Database in the SQL command line, so we have to click on Databases, select the one that we want to delete to drop, which is Movies, and then click on Drop. Because we could potentially destroy a lot of data, now we get a warning in red, asking us if we really want to do this, and we click Yes. And now the entire database is gone. Those are all the MySQL queries that we need for the project to work. We can display the results of searches, and using insert into and delete from, we'll be able to add and delete movies from the moviegoers' favourite lists. So far, we've done all this by hand, entering SQL queries directly into the SQL command line in phpMyAdmin. This is no use if we want to develop an interface that we can use through a browser to deploy over the web. For this, we need to go a step further and embed MySQL queries in PHP scripts so that they form part of dynamic web pages. And in the next chapter, I'll show you how to do this. Before we go on, we need to do a bit of housekeeping and return our database to its original state. To do this, import initialize movies database.sql again from the initialize database folder in the working files. This will rebuild the database with the full data set.